Welcome back guys. Today we'll learn something new about vertex displacement. I'm really excited about vertex displacement because I'm in love with shaders and VFX so and computer graphics also. So in this series we will learn how to implement basic shaders and we'll start from scratch and we'll end up to let's say um, intermediate level. So let's start. In this first shader we will always deform a sphere mesh so our procedure I generated sphere mesh an icosphere or a cube sphere or whatever sphere you have I want to, to let you know what vertex displacement shaders are used for actually they're used in the gaming industry or, or in the rendering in industries to generate some cool shape that can be exploited as VFX or for a more gamish purpose like for example in no Man's Sky, the planets, all the planets are generated in a procedural way. All the planets, the natures, the animals and these kind of things are generated in a procedural way. They used some formulas that we will cover in a future videos called like super formulas, super shapes, and I will show you how to implement them in Unity to generate your own shapes, your own like natural shapes, your own planets and these kind of things. But we'll start from scratch here. So you need to know that in order to implement shaders, you need to know a bit of math. The math used in shaders is not too tough, but actually I will show you some, some, some kind of graphic that shows you what the mathematical function that we are using does to our vertices. So in this video, we'll start from basic shaders, so sine waves, and we'll end up generating torus starting from a sphere. So let's start with sine waves. So in here you can see my shader. So what is a shader and how do you create it? So to create a shader you go to, I created my own folder shaders as you can see here you can create your own folder shaders and in there I have my sphere shader. I call it sphere because I, I don't know I'm deforming a sphere so I call it sphere. In here I have my properties that are basically the fields, the serializable fields of the material, as you can see, of, of the shader. I have these properties like albedo, color, smoothness, metallic, frequency, amplitude, used for weights. And in there, I specify some parameters that we will see in a second. So in there, you have your tags. For example, this is not a transparent shader, so we cannot use the transparency channel. We can only use the opaque channel. So we will consider this material as unfadeable and uh, I will show you in the future fadeable materials so material that can be transparent. Lod is something that we are not interested in in this moment so it's level of detail but we will take a look in a future video. Uh, by the way this is a standard surface shader it's not an only shader. I'd rather work with standard surface shader I think they are more customizable instead of the only ones but it's only a preference so uh, maybe in some future videos I'll do some tutorials about game shaders and we will use unleash shaders also. Uh, by the way these are the pragmas, so pre processor instructions and uh, we are basically uh, specifying that we want to model our surface in a standard way. Standard way means that we are returning a surface output standard that is basically a standard that contains an albedo, metallic, smoothness and alpha of our material. So the, basically it's the color of our material, how our material reflect the light, how our material is smooth, so how it does also reflect the light. I will show you uh, these properties in a second and the alpha is not used here. We are interested in the alpha only if the shader is transparent. If it's not, the alpha is pretty useless unless you're doing some crazy things with vertex displacements. And then we have our pragma target. We are basically targeting the three points, uh, the, all the platforms that can support the 3.0 version of the Unity uh, shaders. There are many, many targets that can be specified here. Uh, usually we specify three because it gives us a nicer look like team. Uh, this is basically a standard comment and you should al also always use 3.0 if you want to do uh, standard things unless you want to do crazy things just leave it 
as 3.0 if you've ever seen something higher or lower uh, then we have our or our parameters we will have a look at these in a second and first of all I define pi because we are uh, actually uh, deforming a mesh with a sine wave in this video so I define pi as this constant as you may see we're not using float as we do as standard in unity we simply say 3.14 stop we're done and um yeah i defined some function there so i'm not going into like uh really explaining you all these things so this is basically the all the shadows and this specify that we want to modify the vertices now i'm explaining to you what is a vertex shader so a vertex shader is basically we're telling our gpu not our cpu our graphic processing unit to displace the position of our vertices so we actually there are some passes inside the pipeline the rendering pipeline and i can go in depth if you wish so drop me a comment if you want to know more about that but basically starting from here our cpu pass our data so our rendering data our sphere to our gpu that can operate some kind of things like this coloring process is done on the gpu gpu generates all the vertices all the things and then pass to the gpu all the things that get generate procedurally and this gpu can modify this stuff how does it do that by displacing the vertices by taking the vertices in here so up database that's basically our vertices and then displacing it by some kind of functions so how did i came up with this function i'm actually not going to show you the graphics of these functions because they're really basics and you can see it on practice in a second uh, but basically I've implemented some kind of function. I implemented it really randomly. I've looked up to have a cool shape. I didn't know. I don't know even if this is a known function, but I did come up, came up with that because it was cool. And uh, I've implemented this, and now I will show you how it does look. So actually, we'll start with this function. Okay, so uh, this function takes in some amplitude as you may see so if the amplitude is zero we cannot see anything and with a good amplitude we can generate some cool waves and the frequency tell us how many waves we have into our shape so if we pump up to 100 we will have kind of 100 waves if we go down to i don't know six we'll have let's see three waves and uh, yeah so 100 will be i don't know like 60 uh waves or so we're basically modifying a sine function so it's really easy to do and uh, as you can see we have a sine we have our vertices multiplied by a sine function that takes in a frequency so how many waves we do want our vertex x and if we modify the, this vertex if we say like let's say y then we will have waves on the y-axis this is the y-axis this is the x-axis and this is the z-axis and so on so forth and we are basically multiplying it by the amplitude divided by 10 this is a division that i did in order to let's say normalize the amplitude value and in this way i'm obtaining a really cool effect of waves but how can i improve it um actually i came out with a cooler function that i specified here and yeah this is a real cool function i actually um copied a bit from cat like coding i'll leave you the link in the description cat like coding is a really cool website where you can learn a lot about computer graphics and for example this effect these waves are generated by this kind of function so this function are one liner so we will not have a look at the graph uh, but in the next videos i promise i will show you the graphs of all the functions because it's really fundamental to visualize some function in order to understand it um last but not least i want you to see what a wave looks like on a sphere and we will have a look at waves in the next video so this is sphere deformed to become a wave precisely a sine wave we'll take a look on the surface shader surface pass in the next videos and we'll have a look on all these functions in the next video but for today i'm done and i hope you enjoyed 
and up until next time cheers